Hello, my creative friends. Jessica Sanders here, colormecreativeart.com. Welcome to my channel. I'm so happy you're here. Today, as you can see, we're going to play with Dina Wakely Pouring Medium and Dina Wakely Acrylics. And these colors are inspired by our Mixed Media Moods, which is a theme board created by Mixed Media Jen and Dee Dee Katrin. And I'm going to tag them here and you can go see their videos with this same color scheme that they put together. So it's kind of a combo, Dina Wakely Media plus our Mixed Media Moods and pouring. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I hope you'll stick with me. So first, I thought it'd be cool to chat about how to use the pour, the pours, <laughs> the results of your pouring in your art journal because it can be used in your art journal in lots of ways. So, you know, these are just some ways that I've done it and you can get creative on your own. Uh, just fair warning, this video may be a little bit long because we're going to talk about a lot about the pouring medium, how to use it, and then we're going to actually do some pouring. So, let's get started. First off, I've got my Dina Wakely Media Journal, as you can see. My cat may come and visit. I see him walking this way. <laughs> and one way I have used it is to use it on tags. And so... This tag has a pour on it. And then I actually painted over that pour with this red on this tag. I just rubbed it on with my finger. And as you can see, I also wrote on top of it. I stamped on top of it and I collaged on top of it. So you can do anything on this media. I'll show you some examples that are not in my book yet. First off, I have this really cool spoon that I kept this way because I loved that design. It was so fun. Uh, but this actually you can probably just peel off. When I was pouring for the Ranger Designers Challenge, I did a lot of trial and error because I had not used Dina's pouring medium before. I have used other mediums to pour. Uh, so I am familiar with pouring, but I hadn't used Dina's pouring before. And I have to say, Dina's pouring medium and cell creator make pouring super simple. You don't have to use silicone. You don't have to use a heat gun. Of course, you don't have to use those anyway, but those are optional things for pouring, right? That you see a lot of people doing. And they're just really easy. You don't have to add water. The mixing is really simple. So we'll again talk about that a little bit more as we go on. So I was going to share with you some of these tags that I made from pouring. Now this is from the leftover pouring and I swiped in it and I ended up with these cool tags. And they're, let me just show you, those are plain. Here's some craft paper that I did it on. Now if you see this black, these are Dina stamps. So I stamped on here with archival ink, worked perfectly fine. It was great. I do, if you look, and see this sheen. I don't know if you can see that sheen or not. But basically you see the sheen on top of this, but there's no sheen on the craft paper. So I thought that was an interesting thing about stamping with the archival ink on top of the pores. But I did that a lot. See more Dina stamps on this one. Thought it was really interesting. This one I have put Dina's washi tape over the top of the pore. See this green and this white is a pour or rather I swiped it from leftover pour. And then I put her washi tape on it, I did some stamping, I added this orange color to it, um, more stamping, so super easy and fun to work with. On this one, I did some stamping here, here. I also did some drawing with a Posca pen. Worked great, there was no problem there. I know these are a little bit dark because I use black in my pouring, but um, I hope that you can see that. So this was one of my favorite little parts of a pour swipe thing that I did. And I cut it out, but I just loved the contrast. It has the little cells in it. And I drew on top of it as well with, I believe that was with India ink. 
yeah, India ink that I drew on top with a chopstick, something that I think is fun to use with mixed media. Thought that was super cool. I had pours that I did not enjoy. I didn't like the result. This one, I don't particularly like the way these colors came out together. And like I said, it was a swipe through the paint. So that's why it looks this way with this line because I actually swiped the paper. Um, but this particular color combination I didn't really like. So for some of that, I decided I would just make some little cutouts and I thought this little punches so the stars were pretty cool. So that was a lot of fun. So there's a lot you can do with these. And then here's one on a big tag, again, swiping through paint. These are not great examples of pour, but I just want you to see how you can use it on tags, you can use it on craft paper, you can make punches with it, you can write on it, draw on it with Posca pens, you can stamp on it, you can paint over it. Um, so many things you can do with these tags. You can cut them out, make shapes, and do lots and lots of things with the pouring. So, a lot of fun. I kind of look at pouring in this way. Well, it can be its own standalone art. I have an example for you. So here's a canvas I poured quite a while ago. It's been on my shelf. It has a little bit of dust. This is not with Dina Wakely Media. This was before Dina's pouring medium came out. But, I mean, it was super cool. And you can see it goes down the sides. I like doing that. Here's another example of a pour that I did that I thought was very interesting. Again, this was not with Dina Wakely Media. But these are examples of you can just have it as art on canvas if you want to but I'm more concerned and trying to figure out how to use it in my art journal because it's Dina Wakely Media art journal it screams art journal <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out ways to use it in that and these are some of the ideas that I've come up with and they work so great to know I think let me show you another example in my book this is one of my favorite pour tags that I made. You can see all those little cells. As I said, I use a lot of black paint in these, so that's why they're so dark, but I'm going to use no black today, so we'll see how that works out. It's one of my favorite tags. And then this page, I cut out a pour, and then I did paint over the edge to tie it to this background. This is also a pour that's stamped over collaged over and of course a little bit of the uh, what is this burlap burlap so I'm I, I love this page it's full of the, my favorite colors and just feels like it feels like it radiates which is why I put this tag on there so okay so those are some examples of how to use it in your journal I feel like and I haven't tried it yet I feel like you can pour, especially in the journal, especially if you did it on the craft page. So I may, I haven't decided if I'm brave enough yet to actually pour into my journal. I think though, if you had protecting protective paper underneath, and I use freezer paper for mine because it has that non-porous finish or you could use wax paper there are a lot of different options I think that I could pour here if I just put the protective paper underneath the page and clamped it down so it wouldn't go anywhere and then I could just pour and I could swipe and do whatever so I think you could actually pour in your journal but it is a little risky and you definitely would not want to use too much paint I'm not going to be doing that today. Not quite brave enough for that yet. Okay, so as you can see, I have an array of Dina Wakely Media paints. Again, these are inspired by our mixed media moods with mixed media Jen and Dee Dee Katrin here on YouTube. I have already mixed up three colors of the paint. There's no need for you to sit through all of that. Now, this is the Dina's one of Dina's new colors, Mineral. You can't get this quite yet as of the end of January uh, because they had to have it reformulated. But I got this in my 
Ranger care package that they sent me for the Ranger Designers Challenge. And the formulation is a little wonky, but I'm going to use it anyway because it fits my color palette. And I don't mind, there's a little bit of, uh, if you use old paint in the pouring medium or the, the, the not reformulated version they had a problem with from their manufacturer, they're getting that redone. But anyway, if you use this, it's a little chunky in there. And I actually don't mind that. I think that could have an interesting effect in the pour. So I'm going with that. And now I will mix blackberry. Is the blackberry the one? Yes, I've already mixed eggplant. So I'm going to mix blackberry and show you how that works. And I have not put cell creator in anything yet, but I will before it's done. Also, you should know that I'm using a white that's diluted with water and pouring medium and it's Artist Loft Flow Acrylic, which I've used in the past with pouring. I just don't have a big enough bottle of Dina's white, and I like to use a lot of white in my pouring, so I sort of substituted that in. I hope Dina doesn't mind. And then I wanted to share with you, I use often on my hands Burt's Bees Hand Salve. It's a waxy hand cream kind of thing. I have it on my hands today protects my hands. I actually learned about this from Robert Burge. I use this a lot on my hands. It protects my hands and it makes it easy for me to wash my hands and I don't have to wear gloves, which I love. I love not wearing gloves. All right, so we're gonna get started with mixing up our pouring medium in here and then we're going to do some pouring. I have the Dina Weekly sticks, which you can see they have pouring poured paint on them and I kind of like them that way but you might be surprised to know that I've actually used this pouring cup this is Dina Wakely's pouring cup and I've used it before and I left the paint in it to dry and I wish I had recorded it but I was able to just peel the paint out like an acrylic skin and now the cup looks all nice and clean again now they're not all as clean as this one which is why you see some orange here on this one. It's left over from before, but it's not going to come off while I'm doing this. It's not going to hurt anything. So you can reuse your cups. I also use some popsicle sticks as additional stirs. And so there you have it. Now I'm going to mix this paint with pouring medium according to their instructions, which is to use about one third, uh, sorry, one part paint, three parts pouring medium. And I'm sure there are other mixes, but this is the recommended approximate. I'm not measuring perfectly or anything like that. So here we go. About. And before you close your lid, it's a good idea to clean it because it is does act like glue. So clean that off with a paper towel or something. That's all you have to do and put the lid back on and it's easy to get off the next time. I often forget that, so I struggle to get my lid off. I don't need this right this minute, but I'll be adding some in a, in a little bit. So let's just mix this up. So you saw how thick Dina's paint was in the bottom. And now I'm just mixing it gently. This pouring medium doesn't really seem to hold bubbles very much or anything like that, which is really nice. I don't really have to guess. I could have measured precisely, but I don't have to figure out how much water, how much paint, how much pouring medium kind of thing. You can just use a straight pouring medium with the paint. No need to stress over that if that's stressful for you. So you see, even though the paint was heavy body and thick, it's still mixed really nicely and it's nice and smooth and clean and beautiful. Keep in mind that while this looks lighter because it's mixed with a boring medium, it's actually going to dry back to its original intended color. So it looks a little light and bright right now, but it's not going to dry as bright as this. The pouring medium dries clear and the acrylics dry darker always acrylics dry darker so something to keep in mind 
So I have this nice and mixed, and this is Blackberry. I think what I will do is add Cell Creator now to two of them. I'm going to add Cell Creator to Blackberry and to Lapis. And I'm just going to put one drop. This is These are such small cups. A little goes a long way. And I don't want tiny cells. I want a little bit bigger cells if possible. So one drop is all I'm putting in each of them. It really doesn't take much. That's the Dina Wakely Media Cell Creator. And then you just give it a little stir. And it will be all mixed up. In there. And now we're almost ready to pour. I just want to show you the different kinds of paper that I have. So because I'm considering and wanting to use my pores in my art journal, there are some options we can use. Now you could do pouring on something like pallet paper and make an acrylic skin. Mm, not as interesting to me, I'd rather have it on the paper. So I have here some white tags from Dina Wakely Media, assorted sizes, and I have some craft paper. These are just samples because I just want to use these. I'm not going to actually pour on these. I'm going to swipe these through the leftovers. So I think I like doing that. It's, I feel like I'm using my paint and my pouring medium and I'm not wasting anything. And so these are for swiping after I pour. Then I have some pouring sheets. Now I have taped down some watercolor paper on a board that is covered by freezer paper. So I taped down the freezer paper on this cardboard and then I taped watercolor paper down on top of that. And so I'm going to have a clean edge around this when I remove the tape and the pour will be here. So I'm interested, I haven't done this before, I'm just trying it out and I'm interested to see how that's going to turn out. So that's one thing. And then I have selection of papers just to make a pour sort of in the middle. And one of them is Dina Wakely Media watercolor paper. And I have Yupo paper. Any brand, this is white Yupo paper. And I have Yasutomo, Yasutomo mineral paper. This is a calligraphy paper that's made from stone and I love it, I love it. So I'm going to try it on these papers today, plus this board and the swipes. I often compare pouring to jelly print, jelly printing, because as with jelly printing, once you get started, it's really hard to stop. You want to keep messing with it and playing with it and doing things to it and you want to keep going. So I, I just want you to know it is like that and if you enjoy, enjoy jelly printing, then you might enjoy pouring because it really is just fascinating. It's fascinating and fun and you don't know what the paint's going to do and it's freeing and okay so I'll quit talking about that now and I will <laughs> get started pouring. So now I have a cardboard box here that has freezer paper inside it. I have a couple of layers of freezer paper because I don't know how much I need to use. I'm not going to use the cups to set things on top of because everything I have is flexible. I'm using paper so this is a little bit of an experiment slash adventure, and I hope that we will all learn something from it and be able to use our pouring medium in our art journals, which would be fabulous. Okay, of course you could just, yeah, anyway. I want to start with my neatest page, which is this. This is my going to be like my absolute neatest page because I mean I have the taped edges, I've got it all going on, right? So let's start with this and I'm just going to do, I'm trying to decide, I have extra cups. I kind of, I love doing the dirty pour, the dirty pour in the cup, it's so fun. <sighs> decisions, 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 it's so hard to decide. Um, I'm going to take a cup, that's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to pour a dirty pour here, but I'm, I'm going to use it, but not for the beginning of this painting, so 
I have my white mixed up and I will put white as a base. I like doing that, that's just me. And I'm going to add Blackberry, which has Cell Creator in it. I will add some mineral right in there on top. Now, if you wanted, if you had a background and you wanted some clear areas, you could add just pure pouring medium to that. That would kind of be cool. And this is eggplant. And last but not least, I'm going to just add every color this time is lapis. I can't actually can't wait to see how this lapis does. I think it's going to mix with the white a little bit, but mostly the colors will stay discreet and separate. And now what I like to do is do just that one stir, almost like if you're folding a very soft egg white. <laughs> now I'm going to set this aside for a minute because I'm not using it first. Okay, now I'm just going to start pouring. I'm going to start with my white. Remember this is not Dana Wakely's white. I have a little fluff of fur there. And I just want to pour, sort of make an area. I wanted this where I could tip it and pour it, that kind of thing. That's what I was thinking when I taped it down. So I wanna be able to spread it out. Okay, so I have it all the way, the white, all the way to the edges, which makes me happy. I don't know if that makes you happy, but it makes me happy. And then I'm going to pour here in this space and across the white. I'm going to take the spoon out, my little stirrer, and actually I'm just going to pour all across there. Make some lines. I tend to give it a little bit of a stir right before I pour. I don't know if that's actually necessary or if it's just something that I do. I'm dodging my camera easel just a little bit. So here we go. And I don't know how many pours I will actually get done because, well, I just mixed up a certain amount of paint and I don't know how far it will go, so we'll just find out. Oh, that poured faster. Interesting. It looks clear. Okay, so that's a lot. I have put a ton of paint here. I'm going to move this now so I don't drip inside. So it's a little bit tricky to record and pour. So here we go. I'm just going to tip it to move it around. Now I see actually a problem. See how this has spaces here? That paper is resisting the paint flowing there. So I'm just going to move that and fill that in with that little bit, sort of swirl that around, touch the edges of that paint and let that move in there. And I'm using this clean one because I don't want to add paint. I don't know if you notice now, see there are some cells already here, right there. Pretty cool. Okay, here we go. Let's tip it now. Just going to move it around and tip it because why not? It's so fun. And I see I have way too much paint. So what I think I want to do, remember this UPO? What I'm going to do then is put it underneath. Now I could actually make an acrylic skin probably from this wax paper, but it'll be simpler for me to pour onto the YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> for me to pour onto the Yupo. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm going to pour this way, just off the edge. And that means some of this is going to come back over in different ways. Keep on pouring. Now remember, I'm going to lose some of this anyway because of my taped off edge. Actually, I think I want to stop there. 
So I have a space set aside for placing these on. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move that over to that spot as carefully as I can without dripping. And I will bring that back and show you that later. So now I have this really interesting mix here on the Yupo paper. And I'm just going to keep going. See, that's the thing with pouring. You just want to keep going. I'm adding white. And a little bit of this. And a little bit of that. <laughs> And this time I'm probably going to swipe it because I have all that gorgeous color there. And yeah, it's perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a tag to swipe it and let those colors sort of uncover on each other. And I don't know how this is going to turn out. Look at this. Like, can you see how fabulous that little spot is? I kind of don't want to touch it. Some of this Yupo is not going to have paint on it, and I am perfectly happy with that. So I'm going to turn this on the side, and I'm actually going to... Oh, look, it, it ran into there because of the box. Okay, let's see. How... Which way do I want to swipe? I need to turn this where it's easy for me to swipe. I think what I want to do is swipe from here across. So here we go. Are you ready? Look, cells galore. And then I have this on the card, which I can just, oh look, let me get out of the way. Does cell creator work? Oh yes, look at that. Look at those cells, that is fabulous. Okay, let me take this and just do that and I have a tag started so cool it's going to get some cells too I can see it okay let me just set this aside so look at the cells forming on there fantastic it's sort of pooling in the middle because this box so I'm going to move that and let it hmm I just want to tip it just a little. I kind of. Okay, I'm going to move this now and hopefully I don't mess up the cells. Okay, so let's continue with Dean Wakeley's watercolor paper. This paper is going to warp and buckle a little bit. So, what I'm going to do to sort of help with that, take some water. I'm going to spritz the back of it with water. That will kind of keep it, it's going to curl a little bit on this side for the moment, but it's going to make it evenly, more evenly moist, it's going to help. This time I'm going to just pour everything in a puddle. I'll just take turns doing puddles. Remember all these colors are going to dry darker. So this is actually called, I think, a puddle pour. You could pour multiple puddles on your paint on your painting. There's no rule against how many puddles or how to puddle or how to pour or anything like that. So do what you want, do what you love, because you know it's your painting. You are the boss of it. I'm thinking about the mixed media moods challenge and how this is. Not, these colors don't look very moody right now, but I still think it will work for that. When they dry, they're going to be a little more moody, a little more white. Mm. See how it's going side to side? It's because this is a box and it has flaps on this side and goes to the middle, and I'm okay with that. A little bit more. Here we go, not much. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. And again, I'm just going to pick up my paper and just move it around. And I don't know, you know what's gonna happen exactly. I'm just playing, which is what you have to do to learn about things is play. 
don't know if I'll cover this whole entire page or not. I'm kind of liking how that cool. I see that gray in there, that mineral. It's looking pretty cool. Ooh, look at this. Very interesting. So you can do more than one thing on one pour. Like, so for example, I have this. Now I could if I wanted to. This is the neatest I've ever been with pouring. I've never ever been this neat with pouring. So see, I have this big area and I'm just going to swipe it with this tag. Oh, look at all that color that was there. And maybe even more. I'm going to turn it. Maybe even more here. So that's making a lot of colors show. And I will do this. Again, another tag started. So that's what I mean also like how it's like jelly printing because you don't know exactly what you're going to get. Plus you just want to keep going and one thing leads to another. So I have this tag which I think is going to be amazing when it's finished. And I have this beautiful watercolor which you can see the cells are popping up here. It's still, it's pooling there in the middle. It's starting to bother me now. What if I just turn it and let it run down that hill? Stick my finger in the paint. And let it run down this hill. And I know there were cells there. This is what happens. You're like, oh, I like this, but what if I do this? And the next thing you know, these are not what you thought. Okay, I'm stopping there. I'm going to set this aside. So there's a lot of white on this, so I think this would be good for the craft paper. So I'm just going to take this craft paper and smush it. And if I wanted to, I could still pour in there. Up and drop and whatever. Using that spoon or that popsicle stick. See that? Do what you want. Just play with it. So fun. Getting a little bit of white. Running out of white, zigzag that around. You can see it's running off because of this curve, but you know, that's perfectly fine. Pick that up. <laughs> you can just do what you want. And I'm going to Now Ranger makes a media board, which is fabulous. I used that also when I was doing the designer's challenge, but I used it all up. I also used up all of my pouring medium. Ranger, please make a big container of the pouring medium. The pouring medium is fabulous, but the bottles are so small. It takes a it's hard to just use just that small amount. So Ranger, I'm talking to you. Make some more pouring medium in bigger containers. I do love this pouring medium. It's so simple to, to use. This is going to curl up. As soon as I set this down, it's going to do this. But I think I have enough paint on this side where it can just run down on its own. Maybe. Or the other option is to spritz the back and maybe, just maybe, it'll lay down. So maybe I'll do that. This is kind of stuck to it, so moving it around changes it, but you can kind of flip it over a little. There we go. Look at that. Is that cool or what? Is that cool or what? Now, since I got it sort of flat, I can sort of play with that. And I don't want it to be like little runs there. There we go. So I'm going to set this aside. So last but not least, I have the Yasutomo mineral paper. It should work great. I don't know. I'm going to do a flip cup on it. But first, I'm going to pour pretty much the rest of my white. So this actually worked out pretty well. I'm getting lower on my colors, so that's good. I'm not doing a flip cup. I'm doing a dirty pour. <laughs> I said flip cup. That's where you actually like put the cup upside down and then you flip the whole thing and I can't do that with these surfaces, but I can do a dirty pour, which remember we did this earlier. And so here we go.
Let's see how it turns out. Again, I have that little spot in the middle. Look at that. It's pretty cool. In the cup. Sometimes the things that happen in the cup are the most magical things in pouring. So again, I have this thing because of this box I'm using. If you need a flat surface, then you could put in the box a piece of cardboard that would level it out. Okay, but I think what I'm going to do is um, push it up in the middle like this. I'm going to use this box to my advantage. Now do it the other way. Let it flow down. Let's see what happens. Look at those colors just sort of separating, flowing apart. I'm just taking advantage of this angle in this paper. <laughs> so cool. So very cool. Okay, so I'm kind of liking where this is, but I also want to take advantage of all of this big puddle of paint, and I don't want to s just tilt this. I could actually like tilt the whole box. I don't want to do I don't want to do that. I think I just want to swipe these edges with this tag. Well, I just love so I have a little on the tag and a lot on the UPO. Look at the cells popping up there. And I'm going to just swipe even more of this tag here. Because why not? Look at this. This is going to be a fabulous tag. Let me set that. Oops, sorry. So look, cells popping up on the tag. Doesn't that look very like galaxy-ish? Love it. Okay. I have this big tag. I'm going to swipe through this big swatch here because I see so much white there and not much color. And I really want there to be, I think actually I'm going to swipe it off of the paper. Still flowing back into this area, which is fine. So what I have on my tag so far, and then here. So this, pa this page of paper is probably going to get cut up and used in my journal. So I'm not really worried about like the overall composition or anything like that. I'm just taking advantage of the paint and the flow and enjoying this process. You can actually tip this, enough paint on this tag to tip it. Nothing I've done here is gessoed. You can gesso if you want, but it's not necessarily required. This tag is going to um, curl and that means it's going to flow. That looks like a, a sky. Like I love that. It's so soft. It's going to dry darker though. I'm interested to see how these are going to dry. And I've officially used up all of the things that I had out. But I still have some paint. And I still have a desire to play with it. So I'm not going to let that stop me. I'm just going to get out more things. So I have some craft tags. Not sure who makes these really. And this is so much white on here. I feel like I have too much white. So I'm not sure that's actually going to help. So the way I swiped that way, it made these lines on the card, which is fine. That's what I expect when I swipe something. Then I can always like make other kinds of lines on here. I could also just add some bits of color. Like this. It's a tag. What do I have to lose, right? I don't have anything to lose by doing this. A little bit of paint. You saw how little paint it took. And pouring medium. 
and a piece of paper. I mean, look at this. So cool. I haven't decided if I'm going to keep this at full speed or not. whole entire tag. I've kind of found a new love for tags with this because I found a way to use them that I hadn't used them before and kind of I'm gonna do this this time. So my Yasutomo paper turned into a dip pond here for pouring. There's nothing wrong with that. Let me put some lapis on this one. And I'll follow these lines sort of thing. I could just lay this down. Nothing spilled. Don't worry. I could just lay this down and let it do its thing, you know? Again, it's the same thing with jelly plates. You think, oh, I could, I'm done. And then you go, oh, but I could get this little bit more paint here. I could do this one more thing. And pretty soon, you've been there for three hours, and you have a gazillion jelly prints. Well, that's the way it is pouring. So just wait. You're going to love it. If you haven't tried it yet, this is super easy with Dina's products. And, I, I mean, you should, you really should try it. It's so much fun. This is just a pond of paint now. <laughs> mind oh look those cells popping up when I swipe that that's fantastic that makes me want to swipe in the other direction and see what happens some cells but not as much because there's a lot of paint and fill this in like I said once these are dry you think there's a lot of paint on there but it dries really smooth and soft and matte or rather I think they dry satin but it's matte enough that you can write on it you can stamp on it you can do all kinds of things so I know this has been a really long pouring session and I'm not quite finished yet but um, I just wanted you to be able to see like how fun it is and how just, it really engages your creativity, your creative spirit, and that childlike thing of playfulness. Now, if you like everything to be in your control, don't be boring. That's not for you. I can tell you because you don't, you don't know how it's going to turn out. You may have an idea of how it's going to turn out, but then... It doesn't work out that way. So just remember, this is about playing. Ooh, look at that. I just love that, that's so pretty. This is about stirring up your creativity and freeing yourself up. It's not about perfection. It's not about making the most stunning piece of artwork that you're going to hang in the gallery or on your wall. It's not about any of those things. Although that can happen and does happen. There's some really amazing fluid artworks. But if you approach it in such a serious way, it's going to just maybe, it might sap all the fun out of it. And I say, you know, do it for the fun, use it in your art journal, all kinds of ways and see what happens. Now that I'm really just playing a lot, I'm not sure I have a lot of more things to say. <laughs> I'm just going to speed this up for you now and I'm going to keep playing for a little while and I'll do that in time lapse and I'll chat with you in a voiceover or something. All right.
Okay, so it is a day later from the boring session. So I wanna share with you a couple of quick things. First off, I did use all of the paint from here, but I let this dry. I didn't clean this down the drain, wash it out down the drain. Dina specifically says, please don't rinse this down the drain. Just let it dry out in your cups. And as I said, you can actually eventually peel this off when you get enough layers in there. So I also made sure to take my spoons out of the cup so they would not be stuck to the cup. See how they're sticking to the paper? This pouring medium is very sticky <laughs> when it's wet. It's not sticky when it's dry. So I took my spoons out just to make sure because I'm going to use these all again. Nothing is going to go to waste. I will throw this paper away, but I'll be able to reuse my box since I lined it with paper. And I could even reuse these little popsicle sticks. So just wanted to show you how I set this aside so it could all dry without having things stick together. Okay, so here are some results of the pores and I'll chat with you a little bit and show you some of them. And then we will wrap this video up. Okay, remember the taped down watercolor paper that I had that was not gesso, just taped down to the wax paper. It is not completely dry because the paper buckled. And if you can see how, let me hold this up. If you can see how it's got bumpiness there, like how this is lower, it goes down. So it's not completely dry here in the middle, but it is dry enough for me to remove the tape and just see if this idea worked because I haven't done it before. So I didn't know if it would work or not, but I wanted to try it. So I'm just going to do that right here for you on camera. And I want to just grab the tape from the back. I could just cut it with a, you know, stiletto knife. So I'm going to pull it away from the paint is what I'm going to do. Now I've got another piece of tape here, so it doesn't matter about that. So I'm just pulling it away from the edge. Sometimes this is my favorite part. It did tear the watercolor paper a little bit. I'm not really concerned with that. Look at this. Look at that nice clean edge. Well, it seeped under on the outside edge and got on there, but it's just white, so no big deal. So there may be some color there. Yes, it did seep under on this side on the part that I wasn't worried about. I didn't think about pressing down the outside edge of the tape really well. I pressed down the one next to the paper. So that's my bad. I didn't press that tape down enough. Live and learn, right? This was an experiment, is an experiment, rather. So peeling this off. As I said, that, tank, that paint is still a little bit wet and where it went under the tape is wet. I don't know if you enjoy peeling tape off the edge of painting or not. I'm getting paint on my fingers. Look at that nice clean edge though. So if I had pressed the tape down a little bit more on the other edges and if I didn't have paint on my hands right now. So I'm pulling that away. I'm done. Wow. I am very happy with that edge. That's great. It's exactly what I was going for except for that little spot. So here we go, and there's more. If I'd pulled it from the other direction, all of those pieces of tape would come out. But you can see I used more than one kind of tape, and this is blue painter's tape. Um, you could probably use washi tape if you wanted to, but I just used the blue painter's tape. Probably use masking tape, freezer tape, whatever. So that's stuck a little on that edge where it went under. So you see, I do have that little bit, but look at that nice white edge. So if I really wanted to, I mean, I could easily frame this. Now you see it's buckled. That's probably an easy way to see it's buckled, but that's okay because it, can, it will flatten out as it dries and I can always put it between some heavy books, uh, put some plastic or wax paper on top and put it between heavy books and flatten it so what do you think that's a lot of um pouring there this was the first one we did it did pool in the middle because the paper buckled so there's something to be aware of when you tape down paper like i did without gesso now if i had gessoed this it probably would not have buckled like that gesso would have protected the paper from absorbing 
So, you know, live and learn. Look at these nice cells here. Looks very pretty. Very cool. I'm very happy with the way the edges turned out. I think it's a fun pour. It looks sort of like trees in a lake if you wanted to think of it that way, but otherwise it's just abstract and you could move it and put it any way you like. You can use this in your art journal as a tip in. That would be kind of cool. Um, so anyway, lots of options there. So I just wanted to share that with you and take off that lovely tape. Next, I wanted to share with you the Yupo. Now the Yupo also is not quite dry. Let me slide this whole paper over here because it's still some wet on the back. So this is not quite dry because, look at the back, it does not seep through at all. The, the moisture does not go into the paper. See, it's perfectly flat. But the paint, see how it's sticking up a little? Okay, so you get a little bit of that. But where it's more dry on this edge, it's much flatter. So this area that's raised is not quite dry yet because the moisture has to absorb on, has to evaporate only from one side, which is the top of the Yupo paper, right? So it takes longer to dry if you put it on Yupo paper. Depending on where you live, it takes longer or shorter to dry. If you're in a dry climate, it's going to dry faster. I'm in a sort of humid climate, and sometimes it takes days for these to dry. So just fun to think about. It does have some cool cells. And I don't know what I would do with this yet. I would probably just cut it up and use it in my art journal. Um, I'm not going to turn it into anything specific. Maybe just cut out some shapes from it or something or even a strip. That would be pretty cool. So there's the Yupo paper. Now you can see how that looks. The colors here did darken over, over time. So I do notice that it did mix with the white some. I also expected that. This looks like a really cool shadow right here. Like unintended cool shadow right there. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, so there's the Yupo. Now let me share with you some of the other papers that we have. First off, I had the craft paper, which if you remember, I just drug it through. And look that, it's pretty cool looking. Like I feel like this one I could really do more with than the shape that I have on the Yupo paper, but um, I feel like I could use this entire page. Like even if I just cut that part off, it would be cool tip in, or I could draw on this area. Now remember, you can stamp on these, you can doodle on these, you can use Posca pins once they're dry. You can do any of those things on top of them, not while they're still wet, so you got to give them time to dry. Okay, it's a play session, just remember that. I like the way the colors dried on the craft paper. So you'll see in a second, let me go ahead and show you the watercolor paper and put these side by side. Now, if we look at the colors on the watercolor paper as compared to the craft paper, you will notice they're quite a bit darker than they are here. These colors are much brighter and so these are like really just jump out at you as really bright colors and these are more subdued. And that's because when you thin the paint, whether it's with water or pouring medium or whatever, it becomes more translucent and less opaque so you can see through it. So since you can see through it, the color of the background matters. This is the difference between the color of this background and the color of this background. The white showing through brightens up the colors and this neutral tone tones down the colors. <clears throat> so just something to be aware of. But this is pretty cool. The watercolor paper held up really well. It is very nice and flat when it wasn't taped down. It dried really flat. If you remember, I spritzed the back of it so it would be more evenly wet. Pretty cool effects with this. So lots of fodder for my journal. Okay, next we have the mineral paper, the Yasutomo mineral paper. Now, I don't know if you can see the little bumps. I hope that you can see these little bumps. Okay, that is from the paint. If you use older paint that doesn't mix smoothly with the pouring medium and you get little balls of paint in there, it'll leave this texture. 
particularly on a paper like the mineral paper, which is like Yupo, it's not really, it's not porous. So this paper is similar to Yupo, but it's made from rocks and it gives you a little bit different feel than the Yupo. And I'll just show you the Yupo compared to this. Really, there's not much difference with the acrylics on the Yupo or the mineral paper, and I love the mineral paper. The idea that it's made from rocks, and I, I mean, I just love that idea because it's natural, yeah? It's pretty cool. Remember, this is also the page that I just did all the printing from, so I did so much printing on this page, then I spread it, spread it. <laughs> Then I spread out the rest of the color on the edges. That's why it has these lines like this. And I let it dry and it looks pretty darn cool if you ask me. Again, these may just be cut up. I could like cut this in strips and put this in my journal in different ways, collage it in. You can do, oh collage, yes, you can do all kinds of things with that. Next, I have my tags. So I'm just going to put a stack of tags here. And I'm going to flip through them pretty fast, but these are had a lot of white. Remember, these are basically all printed drug through the paint. And so they're not gonna have as defined cells and things like that usually. So that's pretty cool looking. And I will add color to these. I might, look, this is almost a heart shape. I would probably draw on this, that heart shape. Add stuff to this, maybe rip it, who knows. Whatever you do with tags, you can do with these. They can be stamped on, written on, drawn on, painted on. You could put a thin layer of acrylic, watered down acrylic, and change the color so you can tone them. This one's pretty cool looking. It's very like um, cloud-like to me. Cool. This one is interesting, has bare. <clears throat> very vibrant colors. Now this one I think I poured actually. I poured on a little bit. And there's the white. You can see cells and my little grandson stepped in it. That's what these marks are. It did stick to his shoe. It was wet, but we captured him time to prevent it from getting any further. <laughs> All right. This is sort of aquatic in spite of it being purple. <clears throat> it reminds me of, of something you might find underwater. These are just my thoughts, guys. You may have a completely different idea. I've stacked these and this was not completely dry. Sometimes when you set them to dry, they'll have this little extra. See how that's over the edge? So if you take it while it's still wet, you can fold it under. But if you saw in my art journal example, I left that on the bottom. I thought it was a nice little edge there, extra edge. But So this is kind of cool. It reminds me like little flowers there. Here's one on craft. Notice again how much darker the color looks because it's on the craft paper. This I think might be my favorite of the tags that I made. I really like the way this looks and this blank paper I would do something with. I don't like how it's just the paper. I like white space but I, don't, I may just would paint it white. I don't know but I don't like how it's just the paper so I would paint that or something or maybe just rip it. I don't know. In any case, I like this one a lot. I like this area here. Feathery goodness. I also like this one a lot. It's like a big splash. Here are the big tags. I did a little bit more with these than just swipe, I think. So those are my thoughts. This one is very feathery. So I think you could like <laughs> like you could make wings from this. I feel like you could just cut out a shape and it would be like it was a wing. And I really like that. Remember, you don't have to use the whole thing. You don't have to use any of it. You completely transform it. It's totally up to you, but it was fun, creative play, right? And you have all of these things that you can use in your journal. And remember, I only used a few colors to do this. I didn't use very much paint at all. I did use quite a bit of the pouring medium because the paint to pouring media, medium ratio of one part paint, three parts pouring medium, that's a lot of pouring medium. So that's why I'm asking Ranger to make a gallon size. It is super easy to pour with this, super easy. 
There, it takes out the guesswork. <clears throat> so now I have all this fodder for my art journal or for making tags, even like, like I may use Dina's heart stamp on here. You could collage over these, like this might be a cool background for collaging on. Um, they're just anything you can do with something you've painted with acrylic, you can do with these tags. You can do with pouring. After you've poured and let it dry, you can do anything you do with mixed media, you can do it with these tags. <laughs> I keep saying tags, but with these pours is what I'm trying to say. You can do anything you want to do with mixed media, you can do with these pours. So it's a lot of fun. I'm working on an art journal page in which I'm going to incorporate one of these something from my pours into the page. I'm going to use the same color scheme that I used for the pouring, so it's going to be all tied together. And I will be sharing with that with you very soon. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments below. I will be happy to answer them and let's let's chat about this pouring medium and let's figure out how we can use it. If you have ideas for how to use it, that would be fantastic. Remember, you don't have to do it the way I did it. I like to use a lot of white. You can do however you like. You can do it on canvas. You can do it on paper. But I'm I was focusing on my art journal and I wanted art journal ephemera, if you will. So all right, thank you so much for watching. I would love to hear from you in the comments. Don't forget to give me that thumbs up and share this video with your friends if they are interested in pouring and mixed media. Thank you so much. I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.